As I started to read these books and take action on these books, every area of my life got better. I mean, I was at a point, I think late teens, early 20s, where I was dealing with a lot of ego on one side of the spectrum and a lot of insecurity on the other. And so together, that was a very confusing place to operate from. But these books helped me remove a lot of ego, remove a lot of insecurities, gain confidence, make money, get healthier, start to become happier, more fulfilled. And so like I've heard Evan Carmichael, who's a great author, YouTuber, say it this way, your purpose comes from your pain. So I solved a lot of pain in my life. I developed a little bit of a purpose, which was helping other people connect with the right books that can help them make the right changes to improve their lives. Welcome back to the Virtual Ventures Podcast, episode 29. I'm your host, Andres Sanchez, and today's guest is Nick Hutchison. He is the founder of Book Thinkers, a brand providing educational content around nonfiction books. He is also the author of Rise of the Reader, a book providing content around how to get the most from reading. I hope you guys are really excited for this episode, and please do me a favor to like, comment, and subscribe, and help us to continue to book amazing guests like Nick. Nick, welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, of course. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to see what you want to dive into today. I'm an open book, pun intended, <laughs> and there's nothing more that I love than podcast interviews like this. Awesome. I'm actually really excited to talk to you as well. I am starting my reading journey and there's oh. going to be, yep, yep. Let's go. There's going to be a lot of ways that I'm going to incorporate that in here as well, because I'm sure I am sitting in the same boat of a lot of different people who are listening. And you've built such an amazing brand on the back of reviewing books and leveraging your knowledge, the book's knowledge and giving people an easy way to digest it and jump in. I want to start at the beginning of your journey. And that's from 2017 to 2019. You were reviewing books online and getting paid for it. Where did that stem from and what was your first taste of or and was that your first taste of online money? Sure. So I'll start he I'll start by saying that if you're not a reader, like anybody in the audience today, if you're not a reader, don't worry. I wasn't either until they made me a ton of money, made me super healthy and happy. <laughs> and so hopefully by the end of today you'll be a little bit more open to it. When I was growing up, I was more of the athlete stereotype, not really the academic. And so growing up I played sports. I was captain of the wrestling team. I played football. I wasn't really into the classroom. And that continued through most of my college experience. But going into my senior year of college, I went to the University of New Hampshire and I was getting a business degree. Going into my senior year, I took an internship at a local software company. And my boss at the time introduced me to podcasting. So shows just like this where a host interviews a series of guests and the guests talk about what they did to become successful in whatever area the podcast covered. And so I had about an hour commute each way. So I crushed a ton of podcasts. And what I realized was that so many of these successful people that I wanted to be like, they were giving at least some credit for their success to the early books that they had read. And so here I am, I'm like, books are stupid. I'm not going to read these. But then I just got smacked in the face one day with the realization that if I'm deliberately choosing not to read these books, then I'm deliberately choosing to live under my potential because the people that I want to be like, that's what they're doing. And so I went to my local Barnes and Noble one day, kind of like list in hand and picked up a bunch of books and started reading them. And instantly I was in a sales role. I started to make more money. I started to have more confidence when talking about money. And I just thought if I could reverse these insecurities that I have for a hundred bucks and a few hours of my time, like what else can I address? And so I just fell head over heels with the space. And that's kind of like step one to the journey. I know I just talked for a couple of minutes, so maybe I'll pause to see if you have any questions or comments or anything. But yeah, I went from like a non-reader to reading is my main personality. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I think that's to be said for a lot of people, maybe not to the extent that you've taken it because you're, you're building a brand around it. But I myself was the athlete stereotype, never wanted to read, BS every book report I ever had to do in school. <laughs> and then as I got older, like you, I identified all these people that I'm interested in and watching their videos and hearing about them. 
do somewhat reference books here and there. And this was a really big point in my life. And this was a really big point in my life when I read this book. And I was like, all right, let me give it a try. I'm in a place where I need to find some inspiration and I want to go and learn about business and investing. So I started to open books as well. And I think that's what really turned me on was it started to be much more applicable. So I think you're at a perfect point. And I want you to just keep rolling on that thought because you're, you're making a lot of sense to me, which means you're making a lot of sense to a lot of people listening. Yeah. So as I started to read these books and take action on these books, every area of my life got better. I mean, I was at a point, I think late teens, early twenties, where I was dealing with a lot of ego on one side of the spectrum and a lot of insecurity on the other. And so together, that was a very confusing place to operate from. But these books helped me remove a lot of ego, remove a lot of insecurities, gain confidence, make money, get healthier, start to become happier, more fulfilled. And so like I've, I've heard Evan Carmichael, who's a great author, YouTuber, say it this way, your purpose comes from your pain. So I solved a lot of pain in my life. I developed a little bit of a purpose, which was helping other people connect with the right books that can help them make the right changes to improve their lives. So I was doing that all sorts of different ways in the beginning, but the most successful way was through social media. And just like I wasn't much of an academic, I wasn't much into social media either. I mean, when I was going through high school and college, I suppose that's when a lot of the major social platforms started to come out and gain a little bit of popularity, but I always enjoyed interacting with people in person. Anyway, I didn't have a lot of people around me that were reading these books. So I was sharing my favorite books online, starting to connect with a bunch of people online. And as that audience started to grow, really the first successful form of monetization happened when authors reached out to me and said, Hey, Nick, your audience looks like my target reader. I'd love to pay you for a book review. How much does that cost? And I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. I'm working this full-time job, reading these books for free. Now I'm going to get paid to read these books. Now this is an official side hustle. So that's how the business started. And the more I read, the more passion I developed for it. I think sometimes people say, oh, you have to have a pre-existing passion in order to start a business. I think sometimes you could start a business like I did, and the passion can develop from that consistency. And over time, each time I would end one of those engagements with an author, I'd say, hey, is there anything else that I could help with related to book PR, book marketing, podcasting, social media management? Like, Let me try it out for you because I want this to be my full-time thing someday. Now, there were a lot of other messy parts to that story, failed attempts at monetization. We tried to build a mobile application twice for readers that failed. We tried to build these mastermind groups and online book clubs that failed. But that business, the book review business, started to take off. And so I leaned into it more and more. Kind of fast forward until today, we've got a team of 10 that supports book thinkers. We work with one to 200 authors a year in some type of paid capacity. We're rolling out new services and new bigger packages all the time. And so it's a real business. Um, but it just started because of that experience, realizing that these books, they had all this unfulfilled potential. And all I had to do was read them and apply them and things would get better. Yeah. So when you were in that process and you started to get those DMs and you were starting to say, okay, here, there is probably an opportunity. It's a side hustle. Did you ever think that it was going to turn into that full marketing agency for authors? Or was that something that just organically happened? It organically happened. I definitely didn't expect to have a marketing agency. But if it, you know, it's felt good outside of all the failure every step of the way. Like what, what I have today, those services have always felt very good and just built them slowly over time. You had a take on books that I really liked when I was listening to some of your other stuff online. And it was books are like a mentor. They're just a fraction of the cost. <laughs> and I, I love mentorship. I think it's awesome. But I do also think that a lot of some of the dream mentorship, and if people are watching or listening, I did air quotes there, dream mentors are a little unaffordable for the typical <laughs> individual. Like you're not going to be able to pay to book a call with Jeff Bezos. But you can read a book about Jeff Bezos or a book about Elon Musk. Talk a little bit about that theory and, and the way that you leverage that. Sure. I think these books, most of the time, they, they literally condense decades of information, decades of somebody else's lived experience 
sometimes millions, billions, or if you read a book about Amazon or Apple, trillions of dollars worth of lessons into a $20 book in a few hours of your time. So somebody said to me recently on a podcast, like, oh yeah, you must have, like you've read all of these books, you've lived more than the 29 years that you've actually lived. And I'm like, that's a good point. I've probably lived thousands of years, tens of thousands of years through the eyes of other people. I've experienced dozens of successful businesses through the eyes of other people, but also, you know, tons and tons and tons of failure. So yeah, these books are an amazing group of mentors for me. And I, I love this idea of like Knights of the Round Table. You know, I've got all of these consultants in each area of my business and life that I can consistently turn to and filter my decision making through their decision making. But I've never actually interacted with most of them. They're just kind of like virtual, you know, versions that I've made up because of the books that I've read. So, you know, a few different ways to look at it. But these books, I mean, it's just goofy to me that so many of us face problems, very specific problems that thousands or millions of other people have overcome. And we could just buy the cheat sheet. We could skip the line for 20 bucks in a few hours and like we choose not to do them. I mean, I remember being that guy that didn't want to read these books, but now every single time I have an issue in my life, I can solve it. I know exactly how to solve it. That's awesome. And you, you touched on something there, like people don't want to just spend the $20 or spend the couple hours to go in and do it. You're a successful entrepreneur running a business. Where do you find the time to read? And like, I feel like at least it's interesting for me. Maybe it's interesting for people listening too. What's your like reading strategy when it comes to reading? Are there audio and reading, just regular reading? How much time per day? Sure. So we'll start with people in your audience that might be saying, I don't have time to read. And what I always like to say at first is if I paid you $10,000 to read a book by the end of the week, do you think you could do it? And then yeah. those same people are like, I could read five, you know? <laughs> so, okay. Now that we've established that you could do it if you prioritized it enough, right? We prioritize the money, but we don't prioritize the reading. Let's say that we do prioritize the reading and I can talk to you in a minute if you want about a book that literally generated an additional six figures of revenue for me last year in the first couple of months after reading it. So that book was worth hundreds of thousands of dollars to me and only cost 20 bucks. Let's say that we do start to value reading and we just want to put it into our calendar. I say instead of trying to find time, we replace low impact activities. Just the first 15 minutes of your net, your Instagram scrolling in the morning or just the first 15 minutes of your Netflix in the evening or your football time on Sundays with reading a good book. Not the whole thing. Like I'm not a robot. I'm a 29 year old guy who loves to go out and have fun, but I also love you know, and watch stuff on social media and watch Netflix. But I also want to serve my future self. And I know the future version of Nick is going to be really happy that Nick today in the present moment schedules 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the evening, at least five days a week to read. So check out the following math. If you're a beginner, 15 minutes of reading is probably about 10 pages. You do that in the morning, you do that in the evening, that's 20 pages a day five days a week, that's 100 pages a week. And the average nonfiction, personal development, self-help style book is about 200 pages these days. So that's a book every two weeks. That's 26 books in the next year. That's 26 problems you could solve, 26 skill sets that you could improve just by replacing 15 minutes of Netflix or 15 minutes of Instagram twice a day. So that's how I like to think about it. I like to just schedule that 15 minutes in the morning and in the evening. And I like to kind of tongue in cheek, call it bookending my day. Because if you can control the morning and you can control the evening and you build those routines, you're much more likely to control the whole center of the day as well. So those are a couple of the ways that I like to think about it. Yeah, I think that's great. And it is crazy when you start to break things down like that. Some people are like, oh my God, it'd take me three months to read a book. No, just a lot, 30 minutes of your day. And like you said, perfectly morning and afternoon, you guarantee that you have those 15 minutes there and you're not going to ruin anything that you've already pre-planned or that you already do. And you could be knocking out, like you said, 26 books a year, which I would say 99.9% .9 of people haven't read 26 total books start to finish in their life, which is a crazy fact. But mm -hmm. you made another really good point there. 
you had a book that you paid twenty dollars for that you can attest to have making you six figures. And I also have experiences with books that I can tie a revenue back to, but people don't know that till they know. So break that down for people listening. Yeah, early last year or mid last year, I read a book called Hundred Million Dollar Offers by Alex Hormozzi. I'm reading and that right now. Sorry to cut you yes, off there. I'm literally so on good. chapter two. So I'm really excited for this. Oh yeah, well that's perfect. <laughs> and listen, we just had Alex on our podcast a couple of months ago. He's an amazing guy. So I I start reading this book. It's recommended to me, and it has a bunch of exercises around creating additional services for your ideal client. And I was in the middle of this period of my life where I wanted to increase my average deal size. And one of the promises that Alex makes early in that book is something along the lines of 20% of your customers are willing to pay five times more. And what that means is you could charge five times more and work with 80% fewer customers. So you could serve them, provide more value, probably have higher margins, probably pay attention to each one of them a little bit more. So I'm like, okay, how do I increase my average deal size 5x or 10x. I go through the book, I go through the exercises. And as I'm journaling through these exercises, literally on a whiteboard in my office, I find something. I find a new service that I hadn't previously thought of. And I was kind of guessing, how much would this cost? And it was actually 10 times bigger than my average deal size was at the time. I thought, you know, I don't know if people would pay for this. So I called a couple of existing clients and the first one that I called, I said, Hey, I'm brainstorming this new service as a result of these exercises from hundred million dollar offers recommend the book. What do you think of this? How much is it worth to you? And he said, dude, I was thinking I needed that exact same thing. And I literally on the back of a napkin had call Nick. I'm like, okay, so here's some synchronicity. This is a weird moment. I don't know if he was like playing, you know, yank my chain or not, but I'm in, how much would you pay? He negotiated me down a little bit, but it was still over five times my average deal size at the time. I go, I test it out, it's a huge success. I start selling it like crazy to my existing client base, to new clients. It becomes our number one service within a few months, driving an additional over six figures, multiple six figures within a few months to my business, a small business. So that's a very, very, very meaningful number to me. And it all happened from a $20 book, the same book that you're reading right now. So, so cool. And Alex just put out another book, $100 million leads, which I'm already through the audio book, but I just got my physical books and I'm really excited to read that and then have a follow-up interview with him and just continue to thank him for writing these books. Thank you all for listening to this podcast. Just wanted to take a quick second to give a shout out to Micromedia. Micromedia is the company that I use to essentially create this podcast that you all are consuming right now. They handle my long form editing and my short form editing. I would be pressed to find anybody that's doing better short form than we are here at Virtual Ventures. And Micromedia is the company that's making that happen. So feel free to reach out to me. I can put you in contact with them if that's something you're interested in. Um, and enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, no, I have someone who has followed Alex for a while, but never really started to intake his content till I'd say maybe two or three months from two or three months ago. And Finally, I was just like, too many people have such great things to say about this book and how it's changed their life and how it's upgraded their business. And it's awesome to just hear another use case here live. And like, I'm so excited. I, I just started it a week ago and I'm so excited to really dive in and get to the really meet chapters of the book and then go. And I have this new podcast, this new experience that I'm starting for myself here. I can't wait to just go and implement it and talk about it and see how it goes. And I have my hard copy of the uh, new one on the way. I think it should be here maybe tomorrow or the next day. So I'm really excited from that perspective. But it's really cool that you've kind of taken this business. And now you're not only working with just standard authors, but you're working with people like Alex Ramosi. And something that we were talking about prior, and something I heard that you had talked about on prior interviews was you work with athletes. Athletes like to get into books, like to write books. Can you talk to that experience? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were talking a little bit before we press record about Alec Ingold. He's the Miami Dolphins fullback. And I love the intersection between athletes and personal development. I mean, there are so many parallels between the two. And being somebody who 
embodied that athlete persona a little bit more than the academic growing up. It's just, it feels really cool to work with people like that. So athletes have such a large platform and yeah, just, I love athletes that write books. I love to continue to support them and people like Alec Ingold are just, they're just awesome people. I feel like books have been coming out more and more lately. What do you, what are your thoughts on creators and, and, and people newer into the online world creating books? Do you think that's going to be a long-term strategy for individuals and will always be consuming books? Because I personally definitely have seen a lot more pop up onto the market, but I've also been seeing great reviews about a lot of the ones coming out and that people are being really thoughtful and really putting time into these books. Are books a long-term play or a quick gratification style sell? That's also just a personal question. Yeah, I think I think they're both. I think they could be either or they could be both. A book for a creator or for some type of agency like book thinkers, they can be a great lead mechanism. They're a lead magnet. Books are a business card. You know, they only cost a few dollars to print for the author so you can hand them out like candy. Yeah. And books are a business card that they don't get thrown away. Right. If Alex Hormozzi, you're at a conference and he hands you $100 million leads, you're not going to throw the book away. We might yeah. throw away a business card. And so, yeah, I think they're a great short term play for generating business and attention and credibility. I think they're also a great long term play because a business card isn't going to sit on my shelves for the next 30 years, but a great book will. And so there's a lot of different ways to think about it. You know, for me, why I decided to write my book, Rise of the Reader is because for years, people in my community have been asking me, hey, Nick, I see you're reading all of these amazing books and you're taking action on them. And I'm trying to do the same thing, but there's a disconnect between information and action slash behavior change. Like what's the gap? How do I implement these? And I would always respond to those people. I'd send them a voice note. I'd jump on a quick Zoom call. I would type something out in an email or a text message, but I knew I was under delivering I knew I was underserving those people because the real answer was much longer and it would take a full book to tell people exactly how to translate information into action. So it's like sometimes it's a great play for a creator from the credibility and hype perspective. But for me, I want to genuinely help people like take better action on these books because I think back to me at 20, 21 years old opening up these books. Yeah, I was excited and I took a bunch of action, but I've learned dozens of things, framework, strategies, tips, best practices that I wish I could go back and teach that younger self because there's an opportunity cost to reading these books if you don't have effective implementation strategies. You know what I mean? Like they're they're not serving you as well as they could be. And I had to commit to writing an entire book and sort of like observe myself from a third party perspective a book is a big enough project that it caused me to like look at myself and see what am I doing here? Because I didn't have the names for the implementation strategies or anything. I, I like had to build them based off of observing my own behavior. So I think sometimes it's about impact and it's about like delivering content in a long form way too. You talk about the implementation aspect of reading these books as we're talking here. And I think that is something that is tough from my perspective. I've read amazing books. And the first one that comes to mind is Atomic Habits. I, I love that book. I think it's an amazing book. There's so much you can do with the information. But I find myself always struggling to actually implement a lot of the things I read. What are tips you could give to people who are in my shoes? Yeah, I have tons of them. And they're all in that book. But let me give you an example. One of one of the best tips that I can give is creating an accountability group. So this could either be with your most motivated friends, or it could be with a group of total strangers. We are the average of the five people that we spend the most time with, right? And yeah. so why not spend more time with motivated people who will hold you accountable to taking action on the things that you say you're going to take action on and implementing things from the books that you're reading. And so I started an accountability group with some of my friends very early in my journey because I read a book called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy that talked about how to do that. And so we met every single week, mostly on Fridays for an hour or two, and we'd talk about our goals. We would talk about the things we were focused on. We would talk about what we're, 
what challenges we're facing. And everybody in the group could ask good questions, provide feedback, provide recommendations, and then send little accountability texts in our group chat throughout the week. Hey, Nick, did you get those 10 pages done today? That type of thing. And so <laughs> like going at it alone is tough. I mean, if you're the most motivated person in your friend group, you don't want to ditch everybody. You want to kind of rise together. And so that conversation might start like, hey, man, remember how you said you were going to run a marathon? Did you ever do that? Oh, no, I didn't. Well, could I hold you accountable to it this year? I've been thinking of starting a group that meets on Fridays. Are you down for that? Yeah, sure. Like it doesn't always have to be just about the books. And if you don't have, like if anybody listening today doesn't have anybody like that, then get into the comment section of some of your favorite influencers, like Alex Hormozy, for instance. If you jump into the comment section and you see people like expressing enthusiasm or writing about their goals or asking for advice, shoot them a DM and say, hey, I'm also going through $100 million offers or $100 million leads right now. I'd love to jump on a call and just talk with you a little bit about the book. You down for that? And most people, if they're already in that kind of community, They'd probably be a little weirded out by it, but they'll be like, yeah, sure. Like I'll jump on a quick call, a Zoom call or something. And you could probably find some accountability partners that way. But I detail how to structure those weekly meetings, the type of people that you want in those groups, how to ask the right questions, when to do quarterly and annual reviews and how those are structured, the activity trackers that you can build with your group to kind of see everybody's activity in real time and all that kind of stuff in the book as well. So Uh, hopefully that was a helpful tip. Yeah, no, that was great. And I'm definitely going to have the book link below for anybody listening or watching to go check it out. Because I mean, I think you're you're already delivering value in just one of the tips of the many that I'm sure are in that book. And it's something that I I, want to read as well, because I'm trying to improve my reading habits and the way that I go about it to make it more sticky and actually meaningful. So I think that was a perfect answer. I'm going to give you probably the question that you get a million times a day and you might know what's coming. What are some of your favorite books that you like to recommend and read? For people that are just starting out, I recommend Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki because that was the first book that I read. And it's also the first book of so many successful people because it's only about 200 pages, pretty decent sized text, very easy language, but it will bring you through a series of aha moments and it'll kind of keep you engaged with the book. It's written in a sort of fictional format as well, so it's not like a textbook. It's new. It's refreshing. Actually, it's not new. It's kind of an old book, but it's really refreshing. And you know, for me, it was a personal finance and investing book, but I think for a lot of other people, it's a motivational book, just a really good read. And I'll just share one thing from the beginning of the book. This was an aha moment for me. Robert says, The subject of personal finance is not taught in school. It's not in the public education system, which means that not everybody is on an even playing field. The subject of money and personal finance is taught in the home. So if you grow up in a poor or middle-class family, you are going to learn poor or middle-class money habits. That's why you stay stuck. So in order to break out of that, you've got to read a book by a rich guy and learn rich money habits. So for $20, you can adopt the mindset of somebody who's worth now hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever the case is. And so that was a really cool moment for me because I was like, hmm, what other areas of my life could I do that in? So that's one book. Another one, which we've talked about like from a, con- from a conceptual perspective already a little bit, but The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. It's one of my all-time favorite books. It talks about how small steps in the right direction, repeated for a very long period of time, will lead to that hockey stick growth that we all look for. So it's the compound effect, the compound effect, exponential progression. And I saw that with my business. I saw that with my social media following. I saw that with our podcast. You just show up day in and day out. You do the right things and magical stuff happens. So those are two additional book recommendations that I'll make for everybody. I'll throw one more out there. The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. When I read that book, I was in my early 20s, working my 9 to 5. Book Thinkers had really just started as a side hustle. And I implemented everything I could from that book. I started solo traveling and then eventually traveling with my girlfriend all over the world for up to three months at a time sometimes in foreign countries. I started building a remote business, leveraging the principles of automation, delegation, elimination, 
getting rid of low impact activities in my life and replacing them with high impact ones. It's how my business really started to take off. And Tim just talks about in that book that reality is negotiable. We can design a life that's uniquely fulfilling to us. And that book's over 10 years old now, but it's such a good one. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was my first book. And, and we share a lot of similarities from that perspective. Tim Ferriss, Four Hour Work Week is next on the list. I was actually about to start it, but then I was like, all right, I need to get into this Alex Hormozzi hype. Let me just sit down and knock these two books out. But that one's next. So I'm super excited. I'm excited to hear that it was impactful for you, especially from someone who's read so many books. I'm excited to see how it's going to be from my end too. And this has been such, such a great conversation. And I think really, we've used the word a lot, but very refreshing just to hear somebody's perspective who was not a diehard reader, who was not all in on reading all his life, and has now turned this reading into a business. And you still show that you have balance and that you're able to write your own book, prioritize your marketing agency, and then always continue to find time to really dive into these books. What, what is next for you and Book Thinkers as a brand? It's a great question. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll be a little unique in this. I just want more of the same. Okay. So what's next for me? What am I excited about tomorrow, every single day? I was talking with somebody about this today. And I'm still, I'm still trying to figure out how to articulate it. But the purpose of reading all of these books is so that we as humans can enjoy the passage of time, whether that's in your business and your personal relationships with your health, with the money in your bank account, whatever that means to you, we all just want to enjoy the passage of time. And at some point that reality has to show up. If you do the work that has to eventually become your reality. And so when I think back to my life, I was always looking for exactly what I have right now, which is a meaningful purpose, a why, a business that's growing and removes financial scarcity, people around me that support me and love me. I just got married earlier this year. Amazing. Uh, Congrats. Thank you. You know, beautiful house, beautiful clients that I work with. Like, I just want more of the same, more impact. So what am I excited about just the rest of my life? From this day forward, 29, I'm turning 30 soon. And hopefully I can ride this high for the next like 70 years. <laughs> Dude, one, congratulations on all the recent success. Congratulations on being married. And congratulations on having such a great outlook on the future of your life. And just from getting to know you now over this 30 minutes, you give off such great energy and are so positive. And I think that's very infectious. And I think that's a reason why you have such beautiful people around you. I'm really excited to now be able to follow your journey on a little bit more of a personal level. I'm excited to get to read your book and just learn more about you as an individual. And I'm excited to hopefully have you continue to come on the show as you blow book thinkers up to this million followers brand, which I think is coming in the near future. So I just want to say thank you so much for wanting to come on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure to meet you. And I see such bright things in Book Thinker's future. Yeah, thank you. And I'll throw this out there too for your audience. If anybody wants a personal book recommendation, it's one of my favorite things to do for people. I like to play sort of like a book matchmaker <laughs> role. Okay. And so anybody that's listening today can just DM Book Thinkers on Instagram. And tell me about a problem you're having. Tell me about a skill set you want to improve. I may ask some follow-up questions, but I'll provide a book recommendation and even try to follow up with anybody that DMs the account a few months after I make the recommendation to see if it was a hit or not. Like I said, I'm in this to help people like me who are trying to make progress in their lives by connecting with books that can help them do that. The right book at the right time can change somebody's life. And so yeah, that's, that's my motivation, man. But thank you for all your kind words. Yeah, for sure. And then where is the best place for people? You said Instagram. Is that the best place for them to DM you? Yes. Okay, perfect. And then all of Nick's and in Book Thinker's information is going to be linked below as well as the book. So again, Nick, thank you so much for coming on the show. It has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah.